actually, I'll ask you this and then we'll go into forensics. In your definition, what would you define incident response as? So, to me, um, well, just from what I've been doing and my experience in it, um, incident response is more so focused on like, I want to say like the recovery and mitigation of like when an attack happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm naturally pairing it with digital forensics because that's <laughs> that's what I that's just how I experience them. But the way it's different from digital forensics is, like you said, um, forensics is more so like um, analyzing the data. You have more time to analyze the data. Um, it's not so much like we'll give recommendations on what the company should do, but incident response is more focused on that, like the recovery. You gotta stop the bleeding. Like we yeah. find patient zero, we're gonna let um, the forensics team know. Yo, we send this to y'all. We found patient zero. Mm-hmm. But I always liken it to like firemen and cops are first on the scene, so we're gonna say those are the SOC analysts. Mm-hmm. Now we have the fire investigator, we had the detectives, we had the paramedics. And I may be missing some people, but those are the incident responders because now they're coming to something. It's already been notified, hey, this is an incident. We need this to this people. Mm-hmm. So we're doing the investigations or we are, you know, containing the host. Paramedics are stopping the bleeding and all that stuff. And then, you know, if the paramedic, you take them to the hospital. Mm-hmm. The hospital's going to be the forensics people. They're going to do the deeper dive on the patient. Yeah, like a lot of times the cases that come through, they've already been attacked and they've already done the stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, and this, I'm talking about the digital forensic side now, yeah. a lot of times they just want us to make sure everything's like good or if there's anything else that we see or was there something that was missed or um, sometimes a company, we've there's been a company that's been attacked more than once. Like that happens all the time way more time like way more than i than i thought like oh, yeah. a company was like yeah we've had this happen to us back in july and it's like what or we've had this happen three times before so um sound like octa right there yes <laughs> so um that's that's what i've been getting a lot in the digital forensics when on the incident response side it was more it was more active cases like um we just saw this come through over the weekend um or we were seeing really strange activity, like, can you know? So that that that's what the incident response side was more like. So yeah. yeah, that's cool. I tried to make it. That's one of the skills I think I developed by knowing my audience. Mm-hmm. I can take something that could somebody could explain it super technical. But I'm like, I'm gonna make this. You can't not misunderstand what I just said about the paramedics taking them to the hospital yeah. <laughs> for the deep dive from the doctors. Mm-hmm. You can't misunderstand that. What? So I I think I asked you this earlier, but. Like for me, I've dealt with uh, a myriad of, of different type of activity based on the industry too. You'll fear, find out in your experience based on the industry, the company you work for, you'll start seeing different attack types. Mm-hmm. So you may eventually get used to the stuff you're seeing because it's like, I'm used to all this. Yeah. Then you go to a different industry. It's like, ah, so their attack vectors are different because of, of this mm-hmm. or the way that they're confined because every company does not have everything set up to be as the network hardened as it should be mm-hmm. because in a lot of people's minds that like you can stunt creativity or we want you to be free. And so now you make your IR team in the sock and forensics, you make the pen testing team. Everybody got to work harder because y'all don't want to do the foundational stuff we need to do to keep the place secure. So there are a lot of, a lot of things. And the crazy thing is, it's still the number one thing that always trips people up. It's not the technology. It's your people. That's the weak link. Mm. The sophisticated social engineering people are watching everything people do. They are, and they may not even go at you first. They may go to, I was watching the podcast. I forgot the name of it, but it was with, I want to say the guy was the C, the CISO or some of uh, his company, Abnormal Security. And he was talking about how the biggest trends that we actually see with attacks are not really super sophisticated attacks just yet. They are more so phishing, mm-hmm. but they don't initially kind of start off with sending you a link. They just send an email trying to get a conversation going with you. Yep. And he was talking about how one time the attackers knew that 
he used Navy Federal for his bank. So they reached out to his wife. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're seeing all this, da 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 But the wife is leery of it. It's like, mm, this don't make sense or whatever. And the person sent the link. The link don't match up or whatever they send. Mm -hmm. But you got to think about it. It might not work on you, but somebody you know, they might say, oh, yeah, yeah. we see that you're friends and you typically go here. We had something going on with the account. Just like the fake USPS stuff. That's trash. But people who are actually going to take time to make it look legitimate, like, if you're going to try to, like, smish me through the text, like, try to figure out the code they send me when they send to me, like, MFA so you can make it look like you're the same people <laughs> if you're going to be smart. But you're not. Yeah. <laughs> but th like those are the things that I've been seeing, too. Like, phishing has, like, been the biggest one. Like, phishing, mm -hmm. QR codes are, yeah. are getting people. Those are a lot of things. Like, people sometimes just won't slow down. Or they'll just pay attention to somebody that's a high profile. I'm like, oh, I, I see that you guys are a merchant or a vendor of these people. We may just compromise the merchant to get y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they do. <laughs> They're not typically going at the big fish first. We're going to get them first. And then we're just going to keep on responding to you like everything good. Mm -hmm. That's when we're going to try to get you. Then we're going to try to exfiltrate your data from that way. Yep. That's, how you, that's how you do it. So all the stuff that we sometimes see that people do on the shows that we like to watch, that's what that was, comes over into – uh, the digital world when it comes to cybersecurity. Yeah, um yeah, I've 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 been ha I've had cases um that I've worked on. It was a whole range of that. It was the range of the QR codes which if I'm being honest to the everyday person is very believable, especially when you're doing the MFA like um cuz these employees when you sign into your computer, sometimes you have to send like a a push notification, mm -hmm. but um the email that I saw that for a case we were working on a BEC business email compromise mm -hmm. um, was with a QR code. And it was like, it was, it says, oh, we're, we're changing our verification. Um, use QR codes now. We're using QR codes now. And the person did it. So it's like, okay, that was one. And then, but we also, I've also seen ones where they were specifically crafted for a specific person. Like they even emailed um, per, they emailed other people in the company pretending to be that person referring to old emails from the past like hey can we have an update on this meeting and they would the person would respond with the updated and then it it would go into like more like yeah. questions that's like wait hold on a second let me let me make sure this is actually you because I feel like we've already talked about this before so yeah you see a whole range of that you see the you see the ones where it's just the spam phishing or whatever. Um, but then you see the ones where it's like tailored to you. Yeah. We've seen sometimes <laughs> one time where the company kind of warned us like, Hey, don't hack. There's something in the subject line. Like it was, and then we, we know mm -hmm. that's how we know that it was a business email compromise. But then like, that just reminded me of my days in the SOC. <laughs> I was replying to somebody in the company we were monitoring. They pretty much had their account compromised. And the only thing I kind of picked up on that was fishy about them is they didn't have, the right signature they should have had. Mm. And this is, so people that are interviewing and trying to get an IR, sock roll, if you want to kind of stand out, of course know your stuff, but being super technical ain't always the answer. Like some of the stuff can be found very simply mm -hmm. through research. You can look through the ticketing system. You can find something, hey, this don't add up. But if they want to ask you something about phishing or saying if you if you knew somebody was compromised, what would you look at? Say, hey, I'll pay attention to their signature. See if their signature is the same to everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it's not. A lot of times they don't attach the right signature and it's kind of like a red flag mm -hmm. and you don't know who they are. Or if you got doubts, call them. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, I didn't send nothing. Okay. Let's yeah. go ahead and, and reset this password, exit out all the sessions and see what happened. Mm -hmm. And then that's when they're going to start. I are going to do all that, the remediation, the containment, and then we're going to send it to forensics and we're going to tell you what you need to do. Yeah. And even, even if like the emails kind of, because, you know, some people have, thousands and thousands of emails to go through um even when we're not really finding anything in the emails it could be like their sign-in activity that's yeah. like or like like if you're only if you're using outlook why do all of a sudden you have like a mac sign-in mm -hmm. so that yeah. those are also clues too that that we use and in, in addition to the emails too. yeah and that's when we work with detections and an im team where we put in rules to say hey mm -hmm. We're going to block unusual sign-ins and we're going to make them say, hey, is this you? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when um, like there's sign-in activities like all over the country. A, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the times we have to verify with the company. Like, is that normal for the, because people travel. Yeah. So we have to confirm, did this person travel to this state in these X days? But if it's from a, co a country that's like, a country Nigeria, interest. Yeah. 
or even like the Netherlands sometimes. Yeah. With that's VPN pretty much always like that. that's pretty much always bad. Um still verify, but yeah. Um yeah, so certain things you over like over the course of you doing case after case after case and seeing um IOCs that pop up all Look the at time. You. Oh. <laughs> Look at you. Let see, me find out you be on the stand ups. <laughs> And seeing IOCs that um, pop up all the time, you kind of just know what to look for. Of course, every case is different. There's go- there's always something new. Like the QR code for one of my coworkers, they've never seen that before. That was like their first time seeing um, a hack through the QR code.